in this video, I'll talk about uh, uh, domains of holomorphy. So in the previous uh, lecture, we saw that on some domains due to the uh, hard dogs extension theorem, holomorphic functions automatically extend to bigger domains. So one, one asks the questions, are, are there domains in higher dimensions where this phenomenon doesn't happen? So as we will see, these will be the domains of holomorphy that I'll define at the beginning of the lecture. Uh, next, after this, I'll uh, introduce this notion of holomorphic convexity. And in the very last part of the lecture, I'll state the carthon thollen theorem that says that domains of holomorphy are exactly the holomorphically convex domains. And we will list some consequences. So as we will see the carthon thollen uh, theorem will allow us to construct uh, some examples of uh, uh, domains of holomorphy. Uh, okay, so, so let's get started. So, so the first uh, thing I want to start with is uh, what it means for a holomorphic function to extend over a boundary point. So, so let's, let's start with that. So uh, let uh, Omega be an open subset of the C to the N as usual, Z be a boundary point and F be a holomorphic function. Omega. So we say that F is uh, it's extendable. Z, if there exists a neighborhood U of C, so Z and U, and a holomorphic function G O U, such that such that G uh, is identically equal to F on some open component of uh, U intersect uh, omega. So the, really the picture is as follows, right? So this is uh, perhaps omega. This is a boundary point C. And then we take a U here. And in this case, U intersect omega is just has just one component. So then uh, G extends F. Uh, so F uh, lives here, G lives here. So F extends G here if simply uh, F and G coincide on U intersect omega. However, if Z is uh, a boundary point on, on some type of slit domain, it can easily happen that U intersect omega has, has multiple components. So that's why we want to make sure that we add not this uh, extra words here, open component and the definition of extendability, just in case a U intersect omega has the multiple components. Okay, so, with this, we can define what, uh, what the domain of uh, holomorphy is. So we say that omega is a domain of holomorphy if for all boundary points, there exists a holomorphic function on omega uh, that does not extend. Uh, Z. So for all boundary point, you can find a holomorphic function that does not extend across that uh, boundary point. And as we saw in the previous uh, lecture, right? So if you punch a hole uh, inside uh, a omega with a compact set, then we saw that 
uh, holomorphic functions on omega minus k automatically extend to omega. So in other ways of saying this, holomorphic functions on omega minus k are the same as the holomorphic functions on omega. So omega minus k is unfortunately not a domain of holomorphic. So at, at this point, really, uh, we don't really have a good understanding if holo domains of holomorphy in a uh, uh, higher dimensional situation. So, so for this remark, we have to point out here, right, that omega is in Cn where the dimension is greater than two. Uh, so so it, it, at this point, it's not even clear if in higher dimensions there exists the domains of holomorphy. And uh, the the point of this uh, short lecture is, is to convince you that this is uh, thankfully indeed the case and uh, we, we, we will be able to give some characterizations of domains of holomorphy. Now to do that first I have to introduce this notion of uh, holomorphic convexity. So uh, let, let me start with the notion of an analytic hull. So take a compact subset in, in omega then its analytic hull of K is defined as all points in omega Z such that F of Z is always less than the supremum of F absolute value on K for all holomorphic functions F in uh, omega. And then this k omega hat is the analytic hull of k, uh, sometimes called holomorphically convex hull of k. I might uh, refer to, to, to k omega, the k hat as holomorphically convex hull. Now let's try to understand a little bit uh, what, uh, what this uh, k hat is. So maybe a few remarks are in order. So it, it's, it's very simple to see, right? Just looking at this condition here. It's very simple to see that K is always included in K hat. Also, if you take K hat twice, so if you take hat twice, uh, you don't do anything. So uh, yes, so, so if, you know, the hull of the hull is just the hull. Uh, what else is here? So another remark. Uh, so thankfully, k hat is always bounded, even if omega is not. And then to, to see why, we'll just take here uh, fz equals zi for all the coordinate directions. And you immediately see whatever supremum zi makes on k you will get the same supremum on k hat as well. So uh, that will imply that k hat is always bounded. Now, another remark is that the analytic hull is always contained inside the convex hull. This is slightly more difficult to see, uh, but what you need to do is take here in this definition, uh, fz of the following type. So e to the lz, where L is linear functional. So C linear functional, obviously those are holomorphic. So then if you do that, it takes a little bit of uh, uh, proving that in this case, uh, K omega hat will be contained in the convex hull. And what you need to use about convex sets is that they are always intersections of half planes. Uh, Okay, so this is some preliminary information about analytic halves. So, uh, and th this will be quite useful for us. Uh, so let me define uh, the notion of uh, holomorphic convexity. So we say that omega is holomorphically convex if for K, compact, you automatically get that k hat omega is also compact in omega. Okay, now since k hat omega is always bounded, 
right? Really, uh, k hat being compact is equivalent with the distance of k hat from the boundary of omega is always positive. Okay. Now, without further ado, let me just simply state the carton thalen theorem. which says that omega is uh, a domain of holomorphy if and only if omega is a omega is holomorphically convex so the, the notion of domains of holomorphy and the notion of uh, holomorphic convexity are the same now i will prove the carton Stalin theorem in, in the next uh, in the next lecture. Let me first let me first uh, say a few consequences of it, which uh, sort of uh, point out its importance. So the first uh, so so proof. I guess I can say see next video or consult in uh, textbooks like Hermander's several complex variables or your favorite one. Uh, here, let me make some corollaries. So the first thing this result allows, uh, despite the fact that holomorphic convexity is still somewhat mysterious, it gives a, a number of examples of uh, uh, domains of holomorphy. So, if omega happens to be convex in the usual sense, so each if, if two points are contained in omega, then the segment uh, joining the points is also con contained in omega, then you get that omega is actually a domain of holomorphy. And really, the way to argue this is simply noticing that being convex implies that omega is holomorphically convex. It's not true the other way around, but it's certainly true in this direction. And there, the way you see this is, is to go back to this uh, remark here that I made here, so that the uh, analytic hull is always contained in the convex hull for every compact set. Now, if omega happens to be, uh, omega happens to be, uh, convex, then conv k will be always compact in omega. And, and that's really all you need to do to prove this uh, corollary. So, so really, this thing here implies this. Okay, but by the carton thalen theorem, holomorphic convexity and being a domain of holomorphy are equivalent. So this is all there is to uh, this uh, this corollary. Another uh, in interesting fact here is is the following. So uh, at this point, we know more domains that are not domains of holomorphy than uh, those that are. So let's assume that you start with a domain that's not the domain of holomorphy. Uh, so that means that holomorphic functions extend uh, from this sort of bad domain to a bigger domains and then so, so you might ask yourself so is there sort of a uh, smallest domain of holomorphy uh, where where you can say that uh, holomorphic functions always extend to that uh, smallest uh, uh, domain so it turns out that as a corollary of carton tallinn theorem uh, you can say that there is always a smallest uh, domain of holomorphy containing an arbitrary domain. So, so let, let's start with that. So, so really the setup here is that take the family uh, omega alpha, which are domains of holomorphy. So each omega alpha is a domain of holomorphy and omega is contained in omega alpha. So then define 
omega hat to be the interior of the intersection of each omega alpha, so of all the omega alphas. So then it turns out that omega hat is always a domain of holomorphy. It's the smallest domain of holomorphy containing omega. So it's, it, you can think of it as sort of the next best thing. Okay, and then uh, sort of a quick word on, on how, you, how you show this. Well, so a, as a consequence of the proof of the carthon thalen so it will follow from carthon thalen proof, will imply that, so if uh, omega tilde is a domain of holomorphy, and then K is a compact set inside it, then the distance from K to the boundary of omega tilde will always be the same as the distance between K hat and the boundary of omega tilde. So, so even though this set K hat is bigger than K, the distance to the boundary will be the same. Uh, now, because, so if, if you assume this, and then we will show this uh, in the next, uh, next video. So if you assume this, then uh, the argument showing that omega hat is a domain of uh, holomorphy here is, uh, is quite simple. So just take K to be a compact set inside of omega, uh, and then you want to show is that k hat omega is also compact inside omega. Uh, sorry, omega hat, everything is hat. Now, since omega hat is contained in a fixed omega alpha, you automatically get that k omega hat, so k hat omega hat is contained in k hat omega alpha for every alpha. Now take delta to be the distance from K to omega hat. We know that this is a positive number. So by this fact here that I ask you to uh, believe me. So this is the same as distance from, uh, sorry, we don't know this yet. So what, the only thing we know because of this is that this distance is uh, going to be smaller than the distance from K to omega alpha. Now use the above uh, fact, omega, omega alpha are domains of holomorphy. So this is the same as distance K hat omega alpha, omega alpha. Uh, and then here boundary in boundary. Now use the fact that K hat omega hat is contained in K hat omega alpha. So that means this distance here is further or less than distance of K hat omega hat from omega alpha, which is the same as distance of K hat omega hat from the complement. a fixed omega alpha. Now, so, so what we get here, again, is that all of these numbers are greater than a fixed delta, which is positive. So in particular, the distance of k hat omega hat is from, from the union of uh, complements of each omega alpha is also greater than a delta. Well, but the interior of the complement of this set is nothing but the omega alpha, right? So, uh, so this implies that distance from, so, so actually th these two are equal. Distance of k hat omega hat 
omega hat is going to be greater than delta, which is what we wanted to argue. So, so we get that again, this uh, important fact here, for every domain, you can define a smallest domain of holomorphy that contains uh, omega. So in particular, uh, th this says that, you know, even though we don't quite know what domains of holomorphy are, there's certainly, certainly plenty of them. All right, so thank you for your attention. And as I said in the next video, I will give the argument for the Carton-Tolentier.